My name's Jock Gardner. I served for 30 years in the Royal Navy, followed by over 20 years working for the Royal Navy in the, the Ministry of Defence's Naval Historical Branch. What I'm going to talk today about is known for short as the Battle of the Atlantic, although the title of the presentation is slightly different. This was the thing that took place during the whole of the Second World War, from its beginnings in September 1939 to the end of the European War in May 1945. And there was things happening on every single day during that. It's often considered to be a matter of action, nothing but action. But in fact, the whole story in many ways is the way in which the ships were got through with relatively little incident and things going wrong. And this is one thing that is often missed by a lot of people. They see the movies, it's what I call the ping ping bang bang school. And it is, yes, it happened, but at the same time it's greatly misleading. Because the true story in many ways is what didn't happen. And what didn't happen was this business of ships sinking left, right and centre all the time. In fact, we managed to beat the German threat, which was not insignificant uh, by a number of means, some of which I'll touch on today. But it's a very long story, as you might imagine. It goes on for longer than any other conflict during the Second World War. And its importance, its significance was that despite the commonly held perception that it was to do with starving Britain out, we never came near to starving, partly because the submarines didn't do as much damage as they'd like to, and also because we got our act together back in Britain. So we were growing more food than we had really ever done before. That's one thing. The other thing that's important and that often gets missed is that what's always looked on as one of the great success stories of the Second World War, which is the invasion, the Normandy invasion of June 1944, which incidentally we're rapidly approaching the 75th anniversary of this, is that that was important, yes. But what was also important, the putting ashore of 75,000 soldiers on one day, at the same time, the story that gets missed is that by the end of that month, June 1944, there were a million Allied soldiers on French soil. And furthermore, those million soldiers needed to be supplied. And modern warfare, even in the 1940s, required a lot of people. It required fuel, it required food, it required lots of ammunition, all these things. And had we not been able to stockpile these things in Britain prior to June 1944, which was a process of not just days or weeks, but months and even years, well, then we wouldn't have been able to, A, conduct the first operation in 6th of June, and secondly, we wouldn't have been able to maintain and sustain the operation, which led to the final victory in Europe. So what I'm hoping to do today is to get across some of the aspects of this conflict, to clear up some of the misperceptions that occur. For example, the fact that submarines despite their name, spent most of their time actually on the surface. And they did that not because they chose to, but because they had to. So that's one of the ways, things I'm trying to get across. I'm also going to go into some more exotic things, such as a thing called operational research, where basically nothing more than getting some scientists to look at the operations that were carried out and then to apply a bit of analysis to it was actually often very important in actually enabling the fighting people to do their job very much better. So it's a long subject, it's a complex subject. I'm supposed to cover it in something like half an hour to 45 minutes. I think you'd accept this as being impossible, but I'll do what I can. <laughs> 